Welcome to our online workshop on using Blackboard Ally to support accessibility in your courses. The topic for today focuses on the implementation of the Blackboard Ally tool, which provides students, faculty, and staff with more accessible digital content. NIU is full of diverse students with unique learning abilities, and Ally allows students more choice in a format that works best for them. And the best part is that this is automatic. So today we'll focus on how Blackboard Ally generates alternative formats for students to download, and it gives instructors feedback on how to improve the accessibility of their course materials that are posted to Blackboard. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Hirsch, and I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. I earned my PhD from NIU, um, and I've been teaching college English for almost 16 years, and I've been a faculty developer at NIU for about five years. I'll take questions throughout and at the end of the presentation, so if you have specific questions related to what we're talking about, uh, feel free to post those to the um, chat thread, uh, or you can unmute yourself. I'll address those questions as they come up. There's also an opportunity for discussion at the end of the workshop, too. So if you have any questions and you want to wait until the end, you can or you can just chime in. Um, in the text chat, uh, let's get to know who all is here today. So tell us what your department or your division is, what's your role, and what do you hope to get out of this workshop? Great. Welcome, Bill, to our team. Thanks, Amanda. All right, and as your um, great, awesome. So we've got a couple of different departments represented here, in addition to our settle team. Um, as your yeah, and another newbie here for recital. Excellent. Yeah, and we will obviously definitely talk about making our, our Blackboard courses as accessible as possible and how to find out how accessible they are currently with the documentation that you have um, uploaded already and built into your courses. Um, something that I like to do with my online courses for my own students too is to just have them share an emoji um, in the chat. And that gives me a sense of where they're at uh, at that moment. So I know if you know they're not having a great day, maybe there's an explanation for why they're not um, chatting as much. So go ahead and share an emoji if you want to. I've got my coffee emoji there. I've already had my one cup of coffee and I'll probably have some more <laughs> as the day goes on. Um, our objectives today, by the conclusion of this workshop, you should be able to define what Blackboard LA is, explain how it operates in a, in a basic way, um, demonstrate how students can use Ally and how Ally supports accessibility and, in, and conclusion, inclusion, sorry. Um, so NIU is, as I mentioned, full of diverse students with unique learning abilities, a range of abilities. So providing them with more accessible original content means that they can choose the formats that work best for them. So for example, HTML for improved reading on you know, their mobile phones, um, electronic braille for the visually impaired, uh, audio for learning on the go. Uh, Ally works in this way. It automatically scans your original content and it performs a series of steps to make that content more accessible um, to students. 
and we'll go over what that accessibility checker looks like in just a minute. Um, but to support NIU's commitment to accessibility, diversity, equity, and an inclusive environment, um, Division of IT has enabled Blackboard Ally and all online courses on Blackboard. It provides students with alternative formats of the files in your course that fit their device, their needs, their learning preference. It also helps you assess the accessibility of your course content and to make improvements over time. Um, so students get to choose which alternative format they use and download for the content. Um, so it can serve students who have disabilities. Um, it can serve students who are using mobile device for their coursework um, or just for their preferences of how and where they learn. So those formats are made available with the original content, which is not modified so that students can find everything in one location. And we'll, we'll take a look at what that looks like. Um, the best part is we don't have to do anything for alternative formats. They're created automatically for any documentation that we upload and for content that we build directly into our course. Um, the only thing that we, they're working on this right now, um, but they don't have accessibility um, checkers and alternative formats yet for video content um, or audio content. So this is just for visual content, um, images, and words. After Ally is enabled, which it already is, you'll notice those alternative format icons, it's large A, um, and accessibility indicators next to your course files. Um, so we'll talk about what those things mean next. We'll get a, an overview of Ally. So Ally's goal is to create more inclusive learning environments for all. Over 800 institutions around the world have adopted Blackboard Ally. Um, over 62 million courses have been processed through it. And over 2 billion content items have also been processed. So um, Blackboard Ally improves the accessibility of our course materials in a few ways. As I mentioned, there are alternative formats for students in our courses. Actually. Um, anyone can download an alternative format. So you can download alternative formats of your documents too in your courses, but also alternative formats are available for everyone via Blackboard Assist in the base navigation for Blackboard and the tools. So you can go to Blackboard Assist and you can generate alternative formats for any file that you want to. It doesn't have to be involved with a course. Um, there's also the accessibility feedback for faculty. These are visual indicators of content accessibility. There's a course report on accessibility of all the materials in an individual course. And there's also guidance to improve accessibility and they're constantly improving that guidance. Um, so we'll talk about which formats are available as alternative formats um, in just a minute. So there's two of these pages here. Um, so these are, this is a chart that Blackboard our anthology now um, has provided about some of the needs that you might have for alternative formats and what are the appropriate alternative formats for those needs. Um, so if you need to adjust the text font and background color, then Immersive Reader or HTML or EPUB would be the appropriate um, alternative formats for you. Adjusting audio playback speed, Immersive Reader and audio, um, audio is a uh, MP3 file. Um, if you're commuting, there are different options there. Um, commuting while driving, copy, paste, and search, for it, format adapts to the device or responsive, so that would be Beeline and HTML. Um, highlighting, note-taking, bookmarking capabilities, PDFs, and EPUB can do those things. <clears throat> um, for mobile device, for offline viewing, if you prefer listening, if you prefer reading, printing, uh, text to speed, speech with speed adjustment, and different language. So different language is um, a feature that is built into Ally, but at NIU, we have disabled that feature. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. But Alternative formats, as I mentioned, they provide a greater opportunity for everyone to access information that they need in the way that they need or want it. 
Um, so with these alternative formats, all students should be able to meet the same learning objectives using the resources that are built to target those needs of, of individual students. So what is Ally just in general? It's a product that integrates into Blackboard. It focuses on making digital co course content more accessible. So as you as the instructor add course content, it passes through an accessibility checklist. It's scored. Um, machine learning algorithms perform a structural and a visual analysis. And based on that analysis, Ally can generate alternative formats for students that are more accessible and provide you, the instructor, with feedback on how to ensure that your content is, is accessible as possible. So the concept of its alternative formats for all learners improves the overall student experience. Um, so it provides students with choice with added flexibility that comes with that kind of personalized approach to how they can access course content. Uh, there's also instructor specific feedback, as I mentioned, to help save time and resources. Um, it automatically, hopefully increases awareness as long as you click on it um, and provides some detailed insight and guidance for us on how to improve the accessibility of, of the content that we upload and add to our Blackboard courses. So what can it do for us? Um, here's the process involved in the conversion of content to alternative formats. So we add content to our course, the content passes through the checklist, it's scored, um, and then we get that full analysis. The alt formats are generated automatically. We get instructor feedback so that we can improve the accessibility uh, of the document. And then we also have institutional reporting available. Let's take a look on um, the course accessibility report and I'm going to share my screen actually for a second because. Um, that will be. Easier for me to show you where to find the course accessibility report. All right, so this is a course that I'm um, instructing right now, which is our Spring Teaching Assistant Institute. So to find your course accessibility report, you go into the course that you want the report for. Um, you just click under the course content, the plus sign here, and we go to the content market. And it's the very first tile accessibility report. So it'll show us what our overall course accessibility score is. Mine is 96%, so I didn't embarrass myself here. Um, and we've got all of the course content, so different content items. I have 34 ultra documents, I have 27 images, I have 15 PDFs, four external links, three Word documents, three presentations, and one HTML file. Um, there, You can start with the easiest issues to fix, and you just click Start here, and it'll show you those. Um, I have one medium scoring content item here that it um, wants me to start with, or I could start with, um, you can then just scroll down and see all of the issues. So I've got two pages here. Uh, this is something that I'll have to work on. You can organize by issue. Um, so HTML, uh, document, document, document. Um, one of the, or you can organize by severity. Um, so major versus minor. So one of the things that you'll probably see, it's not here because I've got um, some, I, I've paid attention to PDF files, but uh, one of the, the typical issues that you'll see is um, untagged PDFs. Um, so that's one of the issues that you might see there, and that's a really common one. Um, another common issue that we see is um, not having alt text for images. So every single image that is in your course should have alternative text uh, so that if someone, for example, is using a screen reader, they're blind or have low vision, then the screen reader can describe that image for them. Um, so any important information that they need from that image should be um, represented in, in that alt text. Um, so if we go to the easiest things, you can see here, it'll give you a score. Um, 99%, even if it says 100%, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing to fix. It just means that Ally has not 
um, flagged anything or found anything, but that, you know, still might warrant taking a look at it and making ju just making sure that you've got everything there. Um, so if we click on the score, uh, this presentation contains images without description. This is the welcome or the, the tour of Collaborate. So I would need to go then back into this presentation document. It's a PowerPoint document and add um, all text descriptions to all of these images. And then once I did, I would want to upload the file back here. Um, if you upload it here, then it it logs that in the back end that you've made those fixes. Um, so it shows us that, okay, you've made improvements in your course. Um, if you just delete the file and then upload a new file, it doesn't show that you've made those fixes. Um, it'll show a better score once you fix them, but it won't show that you've actually um, uploaded a new file to improve this, um, the accessibility score. So that may or may not be important to you. It's important to us on the back end so that we can see um, you know, what faculty are using these accessibility checkers or using Ally are actually making improvements to their files to make them more accessible. And that's something that we can use to uh, justify the cost um, to continue our Ally subscription as well. So um, if anyone raises, you know, questions about, hey, where are we spending this money on this? And we can say, well, you know, we've, we've got these, this many downloads from students of alternative formats. We've got this many faculty who've made improvements to their course materials to make them more accessible, um, without which, you know, without Ally, we, we wouldn't have done that. Um, all right, so let's go back to our presentation here. All right, so again, the accessibility report icon is the, the very first um, tile there in the content market. And you get to that, again, from inside of the course that you want the course accessibility report for. Um, this is an example screen of um, a course that has less accessibility um, or Quarter accessibility than the course that I just showed you. So we've got 47% here. So this one needs a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, work done to it. We've got 38 content items there. That's the easiest to fix. And then we've got 39 items that are low scoring. So we'd want to, you, you can approach it either way. You can either get the more fixes so that you feel better about, okay, if Kind of knocking things off my list so I can start with the, the easiest things to fix and get those out of the way. Or you can start with the lowest scoring content um, to fix your most glaring accessibility issues for your students. So again, here's the, the course accessibility score breakdown um, with your list of items. So this is what the gauges mean. Um, this is our feedback on our files. So the red gauge means that there's low accessibility, zero to 33%, according to the algorithm. This really needs help. There's some severe accessibility issues and may not be accessible to students with disabilities, for example. Um, medium is a little bit better, 34 to 66% accessible, somewhat accessible, but it does need improvement. High accessibility is 67 to 99. That's almost there. It's accessible, but more improvements are possible. And then perfect, quote unquote, is 100%. Um, Ally didn't identify any accessibility issues, but further improvements may still be possible. So you can still check on those, but you can be pretty sure that those are going to be accessible to your students. So to make a fix, um, you would click on the item that you want to fix, and then this would pop up. You see the item, the, the document on the left-hand side here. It's got, um, and I showed you this with the, the PowerPoint in my course that needs work um, with all text for images, uh, but it'll 
circle things in red that are issues. It'll tell you what the issues are on the right hand side. You can click on those items and it'll tell you, um, you know, what the issue is. This the title here has um, text with insufficient contrast. Um, it'll, you can click what what this means. It'll give you an explanation of why that means that it's not accessible. Then you can click how to fix the content and it'll give you instructions for how to fix that content. Then once you've downloaded and fixed that content, you can upload it here. It'll run another accessibility check and then you can see if there are any more issues. So from the instructor's view, um, this is what you'll see when you upload a document. You'll see that little gauge there. Um, you can click on that gauge to improve your accessibility score, find out what issues there might be. This is a PDF, so I'm assuming that is, when I see that for a PDF, I usually think that means it's, it's not tagged, which means that a screen reader would not be able to read the text um, within that document. And that usually happens when we have like a Word document and we save it as a PDF, um, using the print feature. So if you print and then save as PDF, it will not tag the document, um, which means that it will, will be inaccessible. There are ways to make PDF files that are accessible. Um, and we actually do, I believe, have a, a workshop that I delivered last spring that we have a recording of if you're interested in, in learning a little bit more about that. Um, sometimes, though, we don't have access to or we didn't create the PDF file ourselves. So in that case, we'll have to tag the PDF ourselves, which is a lot of work. Um, or you can uh, enlist the help of accessibility services to tag that PDF for you. Or you can try to find the original file um, and see if there's a more accessible version of it out there. Um, so again, here is the perfect accessibility gauge. So we've got perfect. That means that there's probably not any glaring issues with that. Um, if we click on it, it'll show us 100% perfect, no suggestions, um, nothing in red there. So that's, that's really the goal, um, the ultimate goal. But as long as you can make improvements, um, anything is going to be better. So any small improvements that you can make to accessibility are going to benefit students uh, and they're worthwhile. So don't be too hung up on trying to get it perfect. Try to get it, you know, into that, you know, really good green range. Um, but perfect should be, you know, once most things or all things in the course are in that green gauge range, then we can kind of go back and look at perfection maybe. Um, so again, that's that alternative formats icon. Um, it's an A with an arrow. So we can download. Um, and that's a, a doc file. So these are for that particular file. Um, these are the alternative formats that are available, EPUB, Electronic Braille, Audio, Beeline Reader, and Immersive Reader. And then from the student's view, so this would be in the student, the student in the class, they would see that document over here. They would click alternative formats there um, to be able to see for this particular file, it's a doc file, docx file. These are all of the options available for student downloads. They can get a tagged PDF, HTML, EPUB, electronic Braille, audio, Beeline Reader, or Immersive Reader. So they have a lot of options there. Um, one question that we get a lot is, do students see the accessibility score? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, accessibility score indicators, they do not. Um, so if you we look here, yeah, you don't get any of the gauge. They just see the alternative formats icon. So they won't see that accessibility gauge. Um, they don't see the scores. They don't see the accessibility feedback. That is only available to the instructor. So again, they will not see any of that information. But we can see it. So file types that Ally supports are, um, at this time, PDFs, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, 
open office or LibreOffice um, uploaded HTML WYSIWYG, which is what you see is what you get is what that stands for. And that's content that's created in the LMS content editor. Um, so if you're typing directly into the LMS, that's what WYSIWYG is. So it actually does support that. So if you're typing in there and then you add um, an image, for example, um, embedded within that, that WYSIWYG text, it will give you an accessibility score um, for the text, for the image, let you know, hey, you forgot to, to put all text for this image. Um, or you change the color of the font and it's not accessible. <clears throat> um, also image files, including JPEG, um, GIF, GIF, however you pronounce that, PNG, MP, TIFF. Um, this is accessibility checker only. It, it checks um, the images, but it doesn't give alternative formats for those images. So these are the alternative formats that uh, Ally generates an OCR PDF for scan documents, tagged PDFs for Word, PowerPoint, OpenOffice or LibreOffice files. Um, so if you're looking to create a tagged PDF for a Word document, um, the best way probably to do that is through Ally um, and then downloading that alternative format so that you know that it's tagged. Um, and then if you want to share that PDF with your students in your course, you can do that. Um, immersive Reader, that's within the LMS, so it only works within Blackboard. Um, mobile friendly HTML. So if a student is using you know, their, their smartphone to access course content, that'll be the best way for them to do so. It'll adapt to their screen size. Um, audio, MP3, EPUB, electronic braille, Beeline reader, which is really great for students um, with ADHD. Um, and the translated version is also in an LI alternative format, but again, that was disabled by NIU. <clears throat> um, and that's specifically disabled due to concerns with our um, world literature or world languages courses. Um, so we, we got feedback from our world languages faculty about that before we decided ultimately that we were not going to enable translation. All right, so why audio? Audio alternative reads aloud the text in the original content. It also includes alternative descriptions for images if they're provided. Um, and that's why that's important that we check the accessibility of our files, because then when students download these alternative formats, they'll also be able to, to access the materials fully. Um, audio format is saved as an MP3. And why might a student use audio? It benefits individuals with visual impairments, but it also can increase learning when used in combination with reading. So reading and um, listening to it at the same time. Um, electronic Braille is also available. It creates a VRF file that can be read on a refreshable Braille display um, or other Braille reading devices or with Braille software like Duxbury. Um, so you think of it, the refreshable Braille display as a display as a monitorless computer. Um, it can connect to the internet, it can create documents, and it can access a calendar. It can do a lot of the basic functionality that a computer can do as well. Um, it can be a standalone device. It can be connected to a smartphone, an iPad, a laptop. Um, yeah, but most of them are, are limited to reading one line of Braille at a time. Um, audio might be, an, might be excellent for reading comprehension, but those who read Braille actually acquire higher literacy rates on average. Um, and with Braille users with a visual impairment or blind, blindness can know the spelling, the punctuation, the format of the text on the page. Um, so some use, use cases for Braille, if someone has um, low vision or, or blind, are blind, they might be using Braille if they're familiar with Braille. Um, but you know, do not have a visual impairment, they might want to use it. Um, they might prefer to read rather than listening to an audio file or listening to a screen reader, um, or they want to read and listen to the content at the same time using the Braille. 
So um, just as a side note, Allies Accessibility Checklist is based on WCAG 2.1 Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. So the link there, if you are interested in that, I'll send this link out um, as well. It's an international accessibility standard. Um, most of the legislation and legal requirements worldwide align with this standard. So this is what Ally uses for accessibility. Um, and they also have a number of additional checks on top of this that start to target the usability and quality of the course materials a bit more too. So let's talk a bit about um, helping students succeed with Ally. Um, promoting Ally with students is important, um, making them aware that those alternative formats exist. And we've got a toolkit for that. I'll post that in the chat. I'll also send it out in my follow-up email to those of you who are here live today. Um, so we have a toolkit for you um, to create an email or an announcement, um, a syllabus statement, as well as some helpful links to promote Ally alternative formats to students. So if they're more aware of what it is, they'll be more apt to use it. Um, here is our guide page for students using Blackboard Ally. So it gives them information on downloading alternative formats and the Ally file transformer as well. So if they want to create an alternative format for a document, they can do so too. There's also a recognition for promoting accessibility. This is something that CITL developed um, a, a couple of years ago, and there are these digital badges for Blackboard Ally. So I'll go over the different badges that you can earn, um, as well as the ultimate badge, the Ally Hero badge. So uh, Fight for Good is one of the digital badges. This means that your syllabus accessibility score is 90% or higher, and you've posted information about alternative formats in your course in that toolkit, that communication toolkit can help you with that. Um, so this is just the easiest way to get started with Ally is just to make sure that our syllabus is accessible and that students are aware of those alternative formats. Um, your syllabus is generally the first document that your students access in your course. So if that's accessible, then that kind of sets the tone for accessibility. There are three other digital badges promoting accessibility as well. X-ray vision is focusing on captions. Um, they're a critical element of accessibility for those who are deaf or have a hard of hearing, but they can also benefit all students. Uh, this badge has three levels, so you can focus your um, X-ray vision to see through the sound to the text captions. So um, level one, you would edit captions on one video or multimedia presentation that you created, replace a video or multimedia presentation created by someone else to have more accurate captions. Um, and then there's level two going even further with that and level three going even further. And you can read more about that on the, the um, the website and I'll share that website with you in a minute. Um, Super Strains is lifting your overall accessibility score. It's a good indicator of how accessible your course materials are as a whole. Um, as you improve the accessibility of your content, you're going to lift that overall score. So this also has three levels to build on. Um, build on that. So we've got level one where you raise your accessibility score by 10% or more. Level two is where um, a course has an overall accessibility score of 80% or more. And then level three is when you get that up to 90% or more. And then the final digital badge, the individual badge is detective work. And this is about finding and fixing accessibility issues. Um, so it also has three levels. And this is about the number of fixes that you make in your courses. So level one is five or more fixes. Level two is 10 or more and level three is 20 or more, or you have no issues left to fix in that course. And then there's the Ally Hero digital badge. Um, and this is when you have uh, the Fight for Good badge, as well as level three for super strength detective work and x-ray vision. So you can read more about that um, on our digital badges site. 
and we've got a, a short URL here for you. Make it a little bit easier to find that. So it's cital.niu.edu slash ally hyphen badges. <clears throat> and I'll put that in the chat as well. So if you're interested in learning more about those badges, you can go there. Um, you can also go there to um, apply for a badge as well. If you think you have earned one of those badges, then definitely go and apply for that so you can get that digital badge. Um, so some resources that I will share with you um, is a video on Blackboard Ally for Courses, um, information on Blackboard Ally for LMS, which is what we have. There's also different versions of Blackboard Ally that are outside of learning management systems like Blackboard, um, and it also is supported in other learning management systems like Canvas and D2L. Um, there's the Pathways to Inclusion Climbing the Accessibility Leaderboard, um, and that's kind of a leaderboard of, of institutions and how many fixes they've made in um, their courses based on their enrollment. Um, some other resources that I'll share are supporting first-gen students through inclusive course design, the Blackboard Ally for LMS data sheet, and our course content accessibility data study. Um, and then some other things, toolkits, um, how to OCR a PDF, improving contrast issues, so adding descriptions to images. So some of the, the major issues that we tend to see um, in those accessibility reports are images without descriptions, PDFs that are not OCR or tagged, and contrast issues. So that would be the contrast of um, the color of text with the color of the background, then there not being enough contrast there. So again, thank you so much, and I'll take any questions that you have or anything you'd like to see, I can show you. Um, but you can also contact me at any time, I'm an email there. Um, you'll also get an email, as I mentioned, from me this afternoon um, with these resources, um, and you can reply to that if you think of any questions afterward too, or you need help with Ally, um, I'd be happy to, to help you one-on-one -on -one too as you go through and make your course more accessible. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, have a great day and thank you for coming, for coming.